Now we're going to look at how electron spin, which we've been ignoring, plays a role in hartree fock So we have our one electron operators for uh, kinetic energy and nuclear attraction of the electrons, our Coulomb and exchange operators for how the electrons interact with each other, and those uh, sum together to give us our Fock operator, which gives us our orbital energies, uh, which are eigenvalues of the Fock operator, and these one electron orbitals, which are the uh, eigenfunctions of the Fock operator. So to remind ourselves about spin, let's say we have uh, orbital 1 here, some lowest energy orbital, and we've got an electron in there, spin up, represented by this half arrow, which is pointing up there. That would be represented by this type of ket. We're in spatial orbital 1, and we are of spin alpha or spin up. And here we have an electron in spatial orbital 1, and it is spin down, represented by this down arrow in this uh, horizontal bar representing the orbital and that would be spatial orbital 1 in this ket and the ket for uh, spin beta or spin down. And then the integral uh, of alpha star times alpha or beta star times beta so in each case as long as the integral is the same as the, the spin is the same then that equals 1. Uh, if the spins are different in the integral then the integral comes out to be 0 so this is a Kronecker delta making sure that the alpha and beta are the same in whatever spin integrals that we have. Okay, so for our one electron terms, we have something like this. We're going to have something which depends on one electron. So our integral for our one electron operator is going to become integral of, well we already had the part we know, which is integral over r1 of psi star i r1 the h operator psi i r1 and the additional part we tack on to that is an integral which is going to be over the spin coordinate which we'll call sigma and then we have sigma star representing which spin it has alpha or beta and then the spin coordinate we can call omega, call that omega 1, and sigma omega 1. So this is just going to equal the same integral that we're used to, where we've got this uh, one electron integral here, integral over three spatial coordinates, but we're going to tack on this uh, spin part, where we've got sigma, sigma there. And in each case, this is the same uh, spin. This is the spin of electron 1. And in each case, that's going to be the same. And we know since it's either alpha, alpha, or beta, beta, we know that that's going to be 1. So spin does not affect the R1 electron terms. And we're only going to look at spin for our two electron terms, or two electron integrals, or energy, or whichever way we're choosing to view it. Okay, so then moving on to our two electron terms, we have our Coulomb integral, which we'll call Jij, which we know would be an integral of R1 and R2. Then we could have psi star i r1, psi i, r1, so that gives us the electron density of electron 1, the 1 over r12 operator, the Coulomb force that they interact with, psi star j of r2, so we have an electron 2 in orbital j, and psi orbital j. Okay, now we need the spin coordinates of electron 1 and electron 2 as well, so there's going to be an integral over d sigma 1, sigma star 1, sigma 1, and I'm not going to include the omega 1 and omega 2 for the space reasons, because I'm running out of space. Filling up the whole line, d sigma 2 integral over the spin coordinate of electron 2, sigma star 2, sigma 2. Okay, so this gives us our standard expression for our j integrals, which in what we call chemist notation would look like this. I'm not going to talk more about that, but we'd have this type of integral here. And then we have sigma 1, sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 2. 
and electron 1 and electron 2 could be spin up or spin down but in each case we just have the spin of electron 1 in the bra and the ket here we have the spin of electron 2 here so both of these come out to be 1 and we just get our regular old Jij back so we don't have to worry about spin for Coulomb integrals. So let's see what happens with exchange integrals. So for an exchange integral, I'd have something that looks like Kij. And then similarly long integral. Hopefully I can crush in all the space here. Integral with respect to coordinates of electron 1 and electron 2. All three spatial coordinates for both. Psi star i r1 then the exchange happens and we get psi j as you'll see the exchange operator exchanges these indices here psi j of r2 and we're gonna have 1 over r12 psi star j r2 psi i r2 sorry this should be R1 back here. Both of these should be R1. These should both be R2. I'll just go over those in purple as well. Okay, then we need the spin coordinates that are going to be uh, there as well. It's going to be d sigma sigma star of electron of of i or whichever one we call it. Then we've done a switch here, so we need the spin, which was originally in electron 2 in orbital j. So if I call that, say, sigma j there, d sigma, then we have sigma star j for the spin of the electron in orbital j. And then we did an exchange here as well, where we exchanged the indices j and i. So we need the spin for the electron that was originally in uh, that was originally electron one, so sigma i we could call that. Then we have Kij equals, in terms of this orbital, in terms of this integral notation up here, we would have i j i j. Then the bra and ket that we have here is we have the spin of what was electron 1 at the beginning. We have the spin of what was electron 2 at the beginning before we exchanged them. And we have the spin of electron 2 in the bra for the complex conjugate. And in the ket, we have sigma 1. Okay, now in this case, we have to be careful because if they're both spin up, then that's great and we keep the integral. This is just going to be 1. If they're both uh, spin down, then we'll keep the integral as well. If one is spin up and one is spin down, then we'll have this case, and that term will go to zero, and then the whole integral goes to zero through the multiplication. So this whole thing here actually becomes a Kronecker delta sigma one, sigma two, then Kronecker delta sigma two, sigma one, which is the same thing as the other one. So we have to watch out with spin for our exchange integrals. So let's do an example to see how this, how this plays out. Let's look at the electron configuration of a boron atom. So we've got, let's say, a 1s orbital down here, or what we'll just call psi 1. Then we've got the 2s, which we'll call psi 2. And we've got our p shell, or 2p which we'll just call psi 3. We'll say we have one electron spin up, one spin down in psi 1, one electron up, one electron down, spin down in psi 2, and then the fifth electron goes spin up in the 2p shell there. Okay, so what is our Hartree-Fock energy in this case? Okay, so our total energy, EHF, is going to equal each electron is going to have a one electron energy so the spin up and spin down electron are both going to have their kinetic energy and their attraction to the nucleus that's represented with H1 so they each have one so that's 2H1 plus in the 2s orbital which we call psi2 each of those electrons also has kinetic energy and attraction to the nucleus represented by the integral H2 and H3 for how that electron in the p orbital feels the nucleus 
and has kinetic energy. Okay, now on to two electron terms. So the two electrons in the 1s orbital repel each other. That would be j11. I and j are both orbital 1. Then we have the two electrons in orbital 1 are each repelled to each electron in orbital 2. So there's four total interactions there. Up, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. There are four cases of interacting electrons there. So we have plus 4 j12, the repulsion of an electron in orbital 1 with an, an electron in orbital 2. Okay, then in terms of exchange interaction, every every electron as well has an exchange interaction with each other. But if they have an, the opposite spin, we'll see that this cancels out and you don't get that exchange interaction. So there are two electrons, there's two spin up electrons here interacting between one and two. So that gives us an exchange interaction, K12. There's two spin down here and that gives us another one. So we get a total of minus two K12, because you see that minus sign inside the Fock operator there. That's how exchange plays a part. Then we have the same thing. The two electrons are going to interact with the electron in orbital 3, plus 2J13. And then the spin up electron interacts with the electron up there, which is also spin up for a minus K13. The spin down cancels due to the spin integration there. Then our electron orb electrons in orbital 2 repel each other, so we have plus J22. Um, the two electrons in orbital 2 are also repelled by the electron in orbital 3, plus 2J23. And there is one spin up electron here, one spin up electron there, so they interact by a K23, an exchange integral there. So this is kind of the culmination of our discussion of Hartree-Fock for atoms and how you would use that to get a complete Hartree-Fock energy uh, for some atom here, like um, we were discussing this for the boron atom. Not boron, boron. Yep, so we have our one electron terms, which we have for all electrons. We have our two electron terms, which all electrons feel each other through Coulomb interactions. And then electrons which have the same spin also interact through an exchange interaction as well.